If you haven't subscribed, ensure you do so. A pair of speakers separated by a distance D is equal to 0 0.700 meters are driven by the same oscillator at a frequency 686 Hz. An observer originally stationed or positioned at one of the speakers begins to walk along a line perpendicular to the line joining the speakers as shown in figure 314.41. A. How far must the observer walk before reaching a relative maximum in intensity? How far will the observer be from the speaker when the first relative minimum is detected in the intensity? So, when we talk of When we talk of uh, relative maximum intensity, then that's the that's uh, constructive interference. Then when we talk of relative minimum, then that's destructive interference. So um, let's look at the the diagram. So these this and this these are the two speakers driven by the same oscillator, then the separation distance between these two speakers is 0 0.7 as mentioned in the question. Then this is the observer here who moves or walks along a line perpendicular to the line joining the speakers. So this is the the observer so this is the distance he has moved so let's um, look or let's present this diagram in the simplest form so uh, we would define the speaker that we are walking away from as speaker 2 since the observer is here then we will define this speaker as speaker 2 then the other speaker or the second speaker will define it as speaker one. So this is the and this is the same. We will define the speaker that we are walking away from as speaker two. So in this case, this becomes speaker two, and this becomes speaker one. So this figure shows the geometry of the situation, which will help us to determine the distances from the speakers where R1 is the distance from speaker 1 to the observer then R2 is the distance from speaker 2 to the observer then L is the separation distance between two speakers which is 0 0.7 meters 0 0.7 meters so this is the information that we have in our question so we continue so in this uh, scenario the first thing we need to do is to calculate the wavelength of the sound wave so how do we calculate the wavelength of the sound wave so in our earlier uh, videos or in our videos earlier we mentioned that unless specifically stated the sound or the speed of sound in air will be taken as 343 meters per second what do we mean if in the question they have not specifically stated the speed of sound in air then we will assume that the speed of sound in air is 343 meters per second so in this case that's what we are going to to do so velocity or the speed of sound of 
uh, as the speed of a wave is given by velocity is equal to frequency times the wavelength which is here so since we want we do the first thing we need to calculate the wavelength then we we'll make the wavelength represented by lambda as the subject the formula when we do that we are getting wavelength is equal to velocity over frequency the velocity we said we are considering 343 meters per second then over 686 hertz which is the frequency so when we punch that on a calculator we are getting the wavelength to be 0 0.50 meters so to hear the first relative maximum in sound intensity we need to find the point from the speaker where the first constructive interference occurs from the waves of the two speakers. So this occurs when the value of n is equal to 1. So with respect to speaker 1, we will add this extra wavelength to the shorter of the two paths the two paths are uh, giving so the we we have the we have the two paths uh, or the two distances that we've been given r1 and r2 so um we will add the wavelength to the shorter one so what is the shorter one in this case so the shorter one in this case is r2 so from R uh, to the R2, we will add the wavelength. So let's see how this. Uh, so this is what we have written here. R2. Sorry. So um, what usually happens is that we say R1 minus. This is the formula for uh, constructive interference. R2 is equal to like that plus n. Okay. So since we said the value of n is equal to 1, then in this case you find that n will we can we'll write it, we'll write as R1 minus R2 is equal to like that. So, if that is the case, then let's uh, make R2, oh, sorry, R1, the subject, the formula. So, when we do that, we are getting R1 is equal to R2 plus lambda, like that. So this is the information that I am from uh, explaining. So this is what we have written here. So we have added the, the wavelength to the shorter path taken or shorter distance so we uh, now we use the Pythagoras theorem or the Pythagorean Pythagorean theorem to solve for R2 so let's look at our diagram again so this is our diagram here so we want to solve for R, R2. What do we do? We have uh, R1 here. Then we have, sorry, we have L. Then we, this, which is the separation distance. Then we have R1 here. So what do we do to solve for R2? So here, to solve for R2 as mentioned, we say we we'll use the Pythagorean theorem. So what do we do? So R1 in this case we consider it to be the hypotenuse because here it's making a right angle triangle. Then this, um, 
So, okay. So, let's 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 find R2. How do we do it? So, let's um So, we'll say R2 squared is equal to R1 squared minus L squared. So, this is how we are going to do it. So, to find R2, we are going to say R2, sorry, R2 squared is equal to R1, so this is R2 squared, then this is R1 squared minus L squared. So we are using Pythagorean theorem here. So, so in this case, um, Let's try to make the the R the R R one squared as uh, the subject the formula. Or we we make we we, we write R one squared to the uh, right hand side of the equation. So when we do that, we are getting R one squared as um, R2 squared plus L squared like that. So when you do when when you you make the subject of formula like that, this is what we get. So you can do that to, to prove. So if that is what we have gotten, then now let's continue with our uh, question. So, now uh, this is the expression we have here that we are from writing in the uh, previous slide. So, since we said R1 is equal to that, sorry, we said R1 is equal to R2 plus lambda, then where is R1 in this expression, we are going to replace with um, this which is here. Then we'll square it because there's a square there. Then R2 remains uh, squared. L remains squared. So when you simplify this, you get this, which is R2 squared plus 2 lambda R2 plus lambda squared is equal to R2 squared plus L squared. So when you simplify this, this whole thing, we are getting, we can see that R2 squared and R2 squared, they will simplify, which we have written here. Then we we'll remain with 2 pi R2, sorry, 2 wavelength R2 plus this lambda squared is equal to L squared. So when this goes there to the uh, right hand side of the equation this is what we are getting so when you simplify when you simplify this expression you get r2 to be this so r2 is equal to l squared minus lambda squared over 2 lambda so this from this now let's try to substitute we said the separation distance between the two speakers is 0 0.7 so we square it then the lambda we said it's 0 0.5 we also square it that's also the case here lambda we said is 0 0.5 then there's a 2 here so you square the lambda so what do we get so when you punch that on a calculator, you are getting R2 to be 0 
two four meters so um, to produce constructive interference so let's also look at B at the first relative minimum we have the destructive interference so this is what I mentioned earlier to say when we talk of relative minimum we are talking of destructive interference so setting n to be equal to 1 we get the the path length or the path difference of this so now we use the pythagorean theorem once again to solve for r2 giving a perpendicular distance of um, this so like we've mentioned we said r1 is equal to that so in this expression where there's r1 we'll replace with this so this is what we have done here then we square it when we do that r2 squared remains like the way it is then l also l squared remains as it is so when we simplify this expression we are getting this so let's see how we will do it so when we simplify this whole expression we are we can tell that this r2 squared and this r2 squared they are simplifying so we'll get an expression uh, sorry we'll get this expression so at this point we can make r2 to be the subject of the formula which becomes which sorry which becomes l squared minus lambda squared over 4 then over this lambda so let's continue with our question so uh, from what we have written the expression earlier we are saying the the separation distance we said uh, in the question is saying 0 0.7 so we square it then the lambda we found it to be 0 0.5 we also square it over 4 then the lambda also we said it's 0 0.5 which is here so when we do when we punch this on a calculator we are getting r2 equal to 0 0.855 meters to produce destructive interference so this point we are done answering what this the question required us to do thank you for watching remember to subscribe to our youtube channel